OCI, Orange County Inspections, is very happy to present to you the QC QA Professional Seminar, segment number one. What to expect from this seminar? We are going to cover industry materials and practices that will help you when dealing with buildings that are designed to withstand seismic induced forces, or also known as earthquakes. No experience needed? You can be brand new to the industry or a 20-year veteran. We welcome you and know that we will find useful information from this seminar. What to do? The steps are easy to follow. Just watch the video and when prompted, complete the provided study material. Seminar information. We have included information that will not only update you on the latest industry changes, but also teach you by refreshing your memory. And if you are new to the industry of the QC QA professional, it will be a great learning experience not found anywhere else. Renewal credits. Yes, finally, an online seminar that satisfies the CWI nine-year renewal and ICC recertification process. And if you find yourself needing the seminar to help with another type of certification, please just email us and we will help you in any way we can to satisfy those needs. No time limit to finishing. This is the best part that you will find anywhere else. You can start and stop when you want because there is no time limit to finish. Work and family obligations will never be missed again. And as stated earlier, just watch the videos as they arrive every couple of days and complete the provided study material all in the comforts of your own home. At the end of the seminar, you will be shown how to receive your certificate for the renewal process, but more on that later. Segment number one topics. Let's take a look at the different topics we will be reviewing in segment one. Before I start, a simple rule is to have pen and paper handy for taking notes and remembering. You can review these videos as many times as you like. Okay, presence. We are talking about ourselves. We will look at items that will make us a better professional in the industry. We then cover safety, mainly two items, the dress attire and fall protection. Now we cover a topic in which we receive more questions than any item we cover, and that is how to write a report. Here we will help you build a checklist for gathering information, then we will review an example of a written report, and finally closing the topic with with having you write a report yourself. Then we review a few tools that you should have a good understanding of what they are and how to use them properly. The first one is an amp voltage meter. This tool does bring many professionals a large amount of stress because they do not know how to use it properly. So here we will look at a few key points needed with the meter. The next tool is the temperature measuring devices. There are two types that we will cover. Finally, we see the measuring and marking tools that play a major role in both the shop and field. First topic is the presence of the QC QA professional. That would be you and I. Professionalism. We all know someone like this, and yes, it's hard to admit, but we are the same. We either have a short or long fuse, and we know once we get to this level, it's all over. Try to remember the golden rule in these situations. Ethical. Can you say pay off? Kickbacks? Looking the other way? Let's discuss how these projects have big money invested on schedules being hit. And when schedules start to run behind, the stress level rises. So you might find yourself in a position of approving something off even when things are not done correctly. What to do? That is the million dollar question. You are the one who must live with your decisions. Just remember, once you allow it, it becomes harder to say no the next time. Knowledgeable. The mind is a muscle. If not used, it will weaken, and as the industry moves faster and faster, if you as the professional do not stay sharp and focus with your mind, the industry will pass you up. A few items that are always changing are codes, manufacturer reports, and not to mention the drawings. So a little tip is just like staying in shape, a little every day will add up. Look at the positive side. 
you have already taken the first step by participating in the seminar. Organize. It is said a cluttered desk is a cluttered mind, or an empty desk is an empty mind. So as you see, there is no right way to be organized. These days, some love computers, while others love the old-fashioned pen and paper. All I will say is remember the word KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. Why, you may ask? As the project speeds up, and if your system of tracking is too complicated, you will find yourself falling behind on reports, or taking work home when you should be spending it with a family or on your hobby. Responsible. A quote from the late great John Wooden says, by not preparing, you are preparing to fail. So being responsible is being prepared, and that starts the night before, by setting the alarm clock, having gas in the car, and showing up to the site 20 minutes early to just mention a few items. We continue with the pro presence. Good physical condition. I'm not going to preach to you, but I do have one question. Can you fly can you climb a flight of stairs in a four story building right now? If not, as with strengthening your brain, you need to start increasing your muscle strength. We as professionals do a lot of walking, and if you can barely walk from the trailer to the building, how are you going to keep up with the fast pace these projects are being ran at? So, a little day will go a long way. Good vision? The only requirement that I know of is AWS. They require their CWI inspectors to be examined every three years, but they don't even require 2020 vision. So keep in mind that an eye exam can reveal issues you might not even know you have and because we do so much reading, the strain on your eyes can take a toll after a period of time. Keep seeking the answer. The model here is never give up. With the internet, you can find a thread to almost any question you seek the answer to. With technology of computers and phones, staying in touch with fellow professionals is made very simple. And remember, you can always email us here with OCI and we'll help you. So the bottom line is, how do we enhance the project? You must remember, we are professionals in the construction field, and it starts with our attitude, words, and actions. If we lose control in any one of these items, we stand a good chance of losing control of the project. Topics two, we are going to visit safety. Before we start, I want to state this is not a safety class or we are not giving guidance for safety practices. If you want to discuss a few elements of the dress attire and fall protection, you have a safety person with your company and you should address any questions or concerns to them. So let's take a look at our friend here. Starting with the hard hat, first the hat should never be made of metal and should be an OSHA approved hat. To check for approval, there is a small symbol in the hat that shows it's OSHA approved. Next is having a proper fit, whether that is by the adjustable knob or by the fitted strap on the back. You want it to fit snug so that it will not bounce and possibly block your view, which could cause an accident. Next are the safety glasses. Again, they must be OSHA approved. As with the hat, the glasses have a symbol showing approval. There are different colored tints for the lens, smoke, yellow, clear, etc. These lens tints work matching the work conditions, so please check with your safety officer for the right ones. Now if you wear reading glasses, there are bigger frame safety glasses that fit over your reading glasses. But once again, check with the safety officer for compliance. Sturdy clothing. Here we look at the shirts and pants. We see that he's wearing a long sleeve shirt with collar and this will definitely depend on job conditions. If you're around welders a long sleeve would come into play or maybe if you're trying to protect your skin from the sun. So check on job conditions which will dictate whether long or short sleeve shirts should be used. 
Now the pants here are long and a jean material. The wear of a khaki pants, pants is fine, once again, if the work condition calls for it. Usually shorts are not allowed except when an overall is used. Lastly, you are a professional, so watch for holes or stained clothing. Work boots. These are not shown in the picture, but when it comes to boots, the fit is so important because a bad fitting pair will make the day drag by, by because of sore feet. Next is the argument of whether steel toed boots are required and that is definitely based on job conditions and personal preference. So check with your safety officer. Not shown here also are his gloves. It's good practice, practice to have access to a sturdy pair when you need them. It only takes one time getting a steel sliver or wood splinter and you won't forget them again. Now the use of leather or cotton is a personal and job condition driven but a good fit glove is demanded. You don't want a loose fitting glove to get caught in a moving machine or part. Plus as a professional we do a lot of note taking and dirty hands make keeping paperwork clean hard. The second part of the safety will be the fall protection. Once again, check with your safety officer for any answers to any and all questions before starting work. Proper fit. Look at the straps around his chest, waist, and legs. You want these to be snug but comfortable for working. We'll see in a bit why you don't want them loose. Proper care. Again, the motto is to respect your device. It just could possibly save your life someday. So check at the start of work, break or lunchtime, and at the end of the day for any torn or weather straps, buckles, and eyelet holes. Proper use. This is where you do not start any work if you have any questions or doubt about using your fall protection. That is what your safety officer is for. Use them to educate yourself on proper use. Company issued. Bottom line is, if you use a harness not supplied by your company and you are hurt or sadly killed, your family will have a hard time suing the company for a faulty harness if that is found out to be the reason why you went into the hole. Hard to say, but that is the truth. So only use a company issued harness or you could take full responsibility. Let's break down this different view of the fall protection. Looking at letter A shows the connecting device strap hooked to another cable which is attached to the building. This is a job condition that your safety officer would approve. But we see how the connecting device strap hooks to the eyelid of the harness located at the middle of his back. Plus notice the bunch area on the strap. This is a manufacturer item which releases the forces that happen if you do fall. Now, the letter B points to the, how the harness is straight without any twist, and then le letter C points to the connecting device strap again. As you take an overall view of the harness, it fits snug and is in proper position for protection. In closing, if you are not receiving answers to your questions from your safety officer, or are looking for more information, you can visit OSHA's website at www.osha.gov. Here we came across a great illustration of why you must never just put the harness on loosely or undo the connection strap for a second. This worker is possibly reaching for a tool or material and that quickly falls out of the building. As you see the harness is meant to have you in a seated position waiting for help. Sadly, many fall to their deaths because of improper fit or an unconnected harness. Safety is all of our business, and if we see someone or something wrong, please notify safety officer immediately. We are all trying to achieve the same goal, which is make money by working hard and going home at day's end and enjoying our family and friends. We have reached our first study break, so stop the video and read the B5.1, the QC1, and Z49.1 reports. Then complete the study questions. These have been emailed to you with the video. 
If during your studies any questions arise, just email us at orangecountyinspections at yahoo.com and we will help you. When completed, resume the video. The third, third topic we will cover is report writing. We receive more questions on this topic than any other part of the seminar. In this topic, we will help you to create a checklist. With this checklist, just gather the information and place it into a proper format and you will have a very professional report that anyone can understand and gain much needed information from. There are three stages to any assembly of a product. Those are the stages of before, during, and after the procedure. So let's take a look at each one closer. Before the procedure, here we will look at items like the required codes, to pre-meeting issues, and finally to the shipping of the product. Next is during the procedure. Again, we look at items like when the product is delivered to the shop or field through the assembly installation. And finally, the after procedure checks. These will cover post-installation checks to report sequence completion. Before the procedure, this topic definitely ties in with our organizational skills. What do I mean? Our system for recording daily activities is a must because without this, how are you going to document the day's activities? A piece of advice I received from my mentor was, if not in writing, it never existed. So to help you in that process of gathering information for your report, remember to answer the following questions. What? Where? Why? Who? And how? What? Where? Why? Who? And how? Review documentation. Here are items that contain huge amounts of information. Codes, local jurisdictions, which could be federal, state, county, city, and even home associations. Any issues that arise from pre-meetings, approved drawings, both shop and field, approved specifications, requests for information, RFIs, and change orders. Review assembly procedures. This starts with the material, the type, the strength, the identification of mill certifications, markings, and any third-party testing. Then comes the condition of the material, correct shape, dimensions, is it clean, notice any defects, and is, it, and is it stored properly. Next is the fabrication sequence. Is it approved by the engineer of record? Any hole points that require a third party observation or testing? How are delays going to be notified? How will they be marked? How are they going to be reported and to whom? Review personal qualifications. If you are a welding inspector, you understand the need for checking the welder's qualification. But did you know other activities require their own type of certification? If you were observing brazing of a medical gas system, the brazier is required to be certified. How about the installer of fire stop or fireproofing material? Yes, they must be certified. Next is the certification current. Does the ID match the individual? And finally, does the engineer of record need to approve them? Established monitoring sequence. Here's where the step-by-step -step of preparation, setup, and installation is spelled out as per the approved instructions from the engineer of record and or manufacturer. Plus, I want to alert you to two things. First thing is the actual working condition, weather, terrain, public presence, equipment. Any secondary material requirements like storage, placement temperature and cure time, and lastly third-party testing. 
The second thing is more key components of safety. Ventilation. Equipment produces dangerous fumes. Shoring. Think trenches or footings. There is an OSHA requirement for depth. And scaffolding. People remove parts like bracing and planks. With these, we are observing the site safety conditions as another set of eyes and in no way taking the role of safety officers. You could be involved with a fast-paced job with workers hustling, which means an unsafe condition could arise at any time. With our presence of observing, we could spot them and alert the safety officer or foreman on site of the unsafe situation that could possibly save a life or prevent injuries. Establish rejection identification. With this item, the five questions come into play dealing with rejections. What, where, when, why, and how will the rejection be shared to others in the way of verbally, temporary or permanent markings, and recording? Now we enter to the action phase of the procedure. Check equipment. The equipment being discussed here are items like a crane, forklift, welding machines, etc. We can observe their working conditions, leaking fluids, funny noises or smells. Check materials. Think the shipping aspect. Any damage? Was it stored properly? Scratched? Dented? Was it bent while moving to the site? Check working conditions. With this item, think the weather. Are floor heaters needed? Is the wind safe for the crane? Is it raining? Is it wet and slippery? And lastly, the personal attitude. Is it safe and positive? Check assembly preparation. When material is in final position or just prior, does the assembly require some type of preparation or preheating, etc.? Is it going into the right location? Are you checking this all against the approved drawings? Check working variables. Ask yourself, does it seem the work is running smoothly with items such as the erection, installation, equipment, drilling, welding, shoring, securing or tying off of the assembly, and any third-party testing. Check final assembly sequence. Not so much the assembly, but are the whole points being met? Is any cure time required? Has the sequence been performed in the right order? And does it look safe? We end the last stage of the procedure, which leads us to placing the gathered information into a format that will produce a professional report. Check post-assembly. We are talking about after the assembly has been installed or allowed to cool down. Things such as delayed cracking, whether from welding or maybe a wet material that has dried too quickly. Cracks like you might see in concrete or paint. Has the assembly moved? sagged, warped, and of course the all-important third-party retests. Could be 24 hours later, up to weeks after the assembly is loaded. Check working area. Observe to see if the area is clean and in safe condition, like tools and cords in proper place, barricades up and secure for public access. Another condition is the assembly prepared for the weather, rain, snow, or wind. Setup and monitoring testing. Does third-party take, testing take place? If so, has it been set up? Some tests include non-destructive testing, pressure tests, static tests, adhesive, cohesive tests, etc. Prepare report. Not so much your report, but is there some other type of report, like a local jurisdiction? engineer of record. How would you report defects, repairs, third-party test results, and the biggest question, to whom do these reports get sent to? 
Here we will go over the key sections of an example report. The header you see on the left is the company's information and the important item here is the daily report on the top right. We do have different type of reports, final reports, so make sure you are filling out the right one. The next section for review is the project information box. We see the faculty, facility, and project. The facility is the actual location name of the project, and the project name is the actual location on the facility. So here we have the Western Medical Center facility, and the project we're working on is the South Tower Phase 2. Next we're looking at change order. This happens to be change order number 12. This is representative to the changes of the drawings that have been material alterated on the job itself. So as of today's date, there has been 12 different change orders for this project. Next we're going to look at permit number, report number, project completion percentage. The permit number is very important to get correct because without it, there's no documentation back to the local jurisdiction that a permit has been pulled and paid which could cause a shutdown of the job immediately. So very important we have the right permit number for the facility and project. The report number, number 28 here, stands for the series of daily reports that have been written in sequence for this company. So as of today's date, it is the 28th report being written. Project completion, 35%, is established either by the architect of record or a higher source. If you're dealing with Oshpot in the state of California, that could be the ACO, uh, which are now called the COs, compliance officers, establish that with the IOR, inspector of record. Next, we're going to look at the date, the time, the day of the week, weather, site condition, and status of work. So the date is May 5th of 2012. The time is the time that this individual started his day, which was 6 a.m., completed at 2.30 p.m. The day of the week was Wednesday. The weather was clear. If it was cloudy because the rain was blowing in, you just put cloudy, partly cloudy. Site condition was dry. If it was raining or snowy. That's where we have a different change there. And then status of work is in progress. If this was the completion and the last report for that project, that's what we put there. And then we're going to look at contractor. And this is talking about the general contractor of the facility, which is WG and H Builders. Remember, the rule of thumb is the general contractor hires the subcontractors. Now we will break down the body of this report. In the first paragraph, we notice how the condition of what the assembly will attach to is stated and then what is being assembled and its location. So we have performed visual observation of the surface preparation for the reinforced concrete columns that was this condition that will support vertical lead the stainless steel glazing frame okay. what and where it is the stainless steel glazing frame at grid points B12 of the second level so you see how they states the condition of what is being prep are being um, applied to and then what and where what was the frame and where is B12 second level The second paragraph reveals that a third party inspection was involved, what type of material was used, test results were reviewed, plus who and when they were approved by, and also states that a copy of the test results were attached to this report. So we observed car inspection, the third party inspection firm testing the angular spacing and placement of fire stop material, UL, 
1069 into opening located at the horizontal wood floor penetration at grid points B12 of the third floor. So, stated third party involvement, that was car inspection. Stated material approval number, the fire stop material has a UL listed number of a 1069. And then it also states what and where. So, placement of fire stop material at the horizontal wood floor penetrations grid point B12 of the third floor. In the third paragraph we see stated review of a test result, stated the ASTM number, stated report was approved, and also they attached a report. So reviewed approved testing results of caulking pool test as per ASTM C1324 glazing caulk adhesive test approved stamped by Gonzales Engineering dated 42912 see attached copy stated review of test result okay reviewed the test result of the caulking pool test stated the ASTM number C1324 Stated report was approved, approved stamp by Gonzales Engineering, dated 42912, and then also attached the report. In the fourth paragraph, we see the crew size on site and their safety practices. Observed a 12 men crew for Steve's Glazing subcontractor set up scaffolding and secured both men and scaffolding to building with fall protection and cable tie-offs safety monitor with LB consulting on site so stated size of workforce 12 men crew with Steve's glazing stated safety practices set up a scaffolding and secured both men and scaffolding to the building with fall protection and cable ties one thing we didn't mention here in our uh, items but it was a very very good move was he also noted that there was the safety monitor on site and who that person was with. The last few paragraphs state a lot of information. First, the start and finish time of the installation for the day, then what and how was assembled, and we are alerted to a special note of post torquing after a 24 hour delay by a third party firm, and lastly, the first sequence was completed to the first hold point. So, we have work of glazing insulation began at 9 a.m. And if we go back to the start time of this individual, he has 6 a.m. up above. So, stating when the assembly of the material started. A 12-man crew installed a stainless steel glazing frame in final position with the use of a lift-all loader, chain falls, and wooden lumber. The frame was a three-piece sequence of assembly with anchorage to concrete columns by Hilti KZ3 drilled in wedge anchors. There is a 24-hour delay for final torque testing of wedge anchors, which will be performed by car inspection on Thursday, the 6th of May, 2012. The first sequence of work was completed to the first hole point as of 2.30 p.m., which ends the day's activity. So, stated start and finish time, we had a start time of 9 a.m and they completed at 2.30 p.m. Stated what and how was assembled. What was assembled was a three-piece assembly of stainless steel glazing frame. And then there was a special note of the 24-hour delay for final torquing. And then there was a hole point. The sequence of work stopped because it had reached the first hole point. And we finish with the all so important signature box. A document is not official without a signature of the person who wrote the report. Taking a final look at this example report, you see how it states important facts while telling a story from the day's beginning to the day's end. We have come to another study break, so stop the video again and read the article on report writing tips then use both the scenario and report template 
to practice writing your own daily report. It's good to practice when you finish with a report to try and rewrite the same information but in a total different style. This might just open your eyes to another style of writing you might not be aware of. And of course, if you have any questions, just email us at Orange County Inspections at yahoo.com. The Amp Voltage Meter. The fourth topic does cause many professionals a high level of stress and it's usually due to a lack of basic knowledge. We will alert you to a few items about the meter that will assist you in checking welds variables properly. AC-DC current. This first item is making sure the meter can check both AC and DC currents. Example of why is checking the shielded metal arc welding and flux core arc welding processes. They use two different types of currents. Second item is making sure you have a clamped end. This is for checking the amps around the welding lead at the welder. Next are the extension probes. These check the volts at the welding lead connection. A very important item is the yearly calibration. Check for paperwork when you buy a new meter because they might not be certified for calibration. This is where most of the stress comes from. How to set up the meter to get the proper reading. Knowing how to zero out the meter and set the correct current is a must. Not to worry, in the next segment we will show a hands-on video and explain the start to finish process. A big mistake for many is not purchasing a meter capable of a 2000 amp capacity. Why you ask? How are you going to check a process like Nelson stud welding? We now will see the two types of temperature measuring devices that are used. First is the crayon type. As the material reaches its correct heat, the stick, when wiped across, will melt. If it doesn't, that reveals the heat has not been reached. These are usually used by the welder themselves and do come in different ranges of temperature readings 50, 100, 150, etc. Next is the infrared gun just point and shoot. The heat degree is shown. This is a must for the QC QA professional that is around any type of heating materials. But beware that these also must be calibrated annually. We conclude this segment with the tools used for measuring and marking materials dealing with welding. First we look at the welding gauges that are most used in the industry. Even though there are many types of gauges we will focus on three. The plate gauges. These plates come in different sizes for measuring the fillet weld. One end can measure the actual leg and when the other end is used it will measure the throat of the fillet weld. If this all sounds like Greek we will cover how to measure both fillet and groove welds using these gauges properly later in the seminar. Next is the bridge cam gauge. This one tool can do many different and important checks on both the fillet and groove welds. Not only on completed welds, but also for preparation and fit up checks. Once again, we will go th more into detail later. Lastly is the gauge that checks light gauge metals. First is a wheel shape or the plate style is available. Either is a personal choice. Staying with the measuring and marking tools, tape measure. We now view a typical tape measure. The different working conditions will dictate the length being used. Machinist steel ruler. This type of a ruler is nice for two reasons. It fits nice in your shirt pocket and this ruler takes the measurement down to a 32nd and 64th which makes measuring welding electrode diameters easier. Soapstone and paint crayons. The soapstone is a sturdy writing instrument for communication between personnel. 
The slopestone can be wiped clean with a cloth, but also stay during the weather changes that face all projects. Next is the paint crayon. As its name states, it looks and acts like a crayon, but the inner fill is a paint-like substance that will last for years. We have come to the end of segment number one and would like to recap the topics that have been covered so far. Our attitude. We start with presence. We should always enhance the project by our presence. I ask, are you bringing your experience, knowledge, and professionalism to the project? Or are you lying about your experience, making up stuff to cover your lack of knowledge, and using your power as a sign of professionalism? Work safe. We feel safety is all of our duty to be alert for. Find out who the safety officer are and attend the tailgate meetings that are performed weekly on projects. Checklist for uh, report writing. We discuss the items that will give you a checklist for gathering the information. Just answer the questions of what, where, why, when, and how. Place them in a format that tells a story from the start to finish. Oh, by the way, don't forget to check your spelling, and you will have a professional report that others will want to copy. Review tools for welding. Lastly, we cover tools for measuring and marking welding materials, the tape measure, machinist ruler, and markers. There are many good tools out there being used, so the best way to find out what works best for you is asking others what they are using. Okay, this concludes this segment. Please move to segment number two.